coming up. Yes. The, yes. the rosy double trio or the double trio, the, the rosy duo. And these women are amazing. Our community is lucky to have them. Um, there are good friends who work over at the United Way. So why don't we go ahead and bring those guys on if we could? I think they're ready for us. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. Rosie and Rosie, <laughs> how are we today? I'm good. How are you? We're good. We're good. We are. The Rosies collectively yeah. are great. We've decided that United Way can't have too many Rosies, so I'd yeah. like to put the plug out now that if your name is Rosie and you feel philanthropic or love the Missoula community, come on come, down. Yeah, come on down. Just yeah. come on down to United Way. More than likely, if your name is Rosie, you've got to be phenomenal and you'd want to work with us. The more the merrier. <laughs> Especially <laughs> named Rosie. <laughs> we could have a Rosie flash mob. We could. Yes. Yes. Although we'll make it work. Most of the time, we often discuss that whenever we tell people our names, the first thing they will tell us is that they have pets named, <laughs> named Rosie. Yeah. Rosie. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to the is barista it, it at the Starbucks. Dogs? Both. Uh, all, yeah. Yeah. Hamsters, all. guinea pigs, bunnies. Bunnies. There's a new bunny out there named yeah. Rosie. Oh, yeah, Living or awesome. dead. Living or dead. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least it's people great. love their pets. When I introduce my name, I say, hey, I'm Nikki. And people tell me, oh, you know, there was a stripper named Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. So I can relate you know, to your pain, but I would much rather someone say, oh, my favorite dog's name was Nikki. <laughs> Well, <laughs> it happens to the best of us, you know, if so there's we, probably we out there. to mention something. Um, so, you know, before we went on with um, moving mountains, we said we really hoped we got to three quarters of a million dollars. Yeah. And we did it. We're at $757,000. Yes. That's thank awesome. you, Missoula. Thank you, Bitterroot. Um, so exciting. Yeah. We are, so we're excited. on our way to that million dollar goal. How's the United Way campaign doing, guys? We're doing really good. You know, last year was actually our best year yet. And so we're looking, we're coming up on that mark. We're about there. So if anyone hasn't donated yet, they totally can check out our profile. We are fundraising specifically for our disaster response, uh, disaster assistance and emergency response fund. So things like our COVID fund that we had last year. Um, this is also our fire fund. Um, this is also the fund that helps uh, the temporary safe outdoor space, our homelessness initiatives, all those things. So um, it's a really great fund and we do have a specific support area for it. So you can go on our profile and check out more information about that. And what does United Way not support? I mean, she just named like 17 things <laughs> that make our entire community better. And that is why we work for them is because they have their hands in every area of help giving and help seeking that is around Missoula. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And that's why we support yeah, and that's why we, you know, we have this program called Project Tomorrow Montana. Whoa. Hello tomorrow. Hello on, tomorrow. On brand. Hello. On brand. On brand. Um, yeah, we didn't get any t-shirts. Oh, we can fix that. We well, can fix that. A large pile of t-shirts. Yeah, we have. Look at this. I've got a whole pile right here. That's for hey, you. Maybe we, want some. Maybe we could do a swap of Missoula Gibbs for a project tomorrow. Absolutely. I, I noticed your little B shirt and I I'm, I'm see it. We do love that. I yeah. see it. Thank and those t-shirts are available all the time on our Project Tomorrow website. If you donate for United Way and put down that you want to give to Project Tomorrow through your t-shirt donation, you get your t-shirt. And local drop-offs are often done by me. I was going to say, I think that's I the real gift is just it's, getting Rosie to drop off. It's me. It's me. Yeah. I say, you know what? Add a, a tack a little know, more money on there. Yeah, tack a little more money on there, and I'll sing in your front yard. Well, I just want you, you pick to come the song. in that little thing you were wearing last night over your clothes. The, um, you know. Yeah, do you have I a spare I, one of those? I, or the, I'm pretty is sure. It a is it a market? I'm just going to say I'm pretty sure I blacked out. I don't remember that. I don't I don't know if we have to talk about that. United Way does not support that, that, uh, that activity. Okay, right. <laughs> Two separate, 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 separate. That was, Sorry. Yeah, that was a lot of... Not a United Way supported activity. That was a lot of hair outside yeah. of undergarments. <laughs> so much hair, no hair. Well, let's yeah. circle back to the yeah. United Way. Yeah. Rosie Goldich, 
Do you want to tell us a little bit more about uh, the United Way in specific? And then I think you have a little clip that we're going to show here for you, right? Yeah. So United Way of Missoula County, if you can believe it, is 90 years old this year. Woo! We have been serving the Missoula community for 90 years. And, and we look really so young. So young. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, we've done so much for this community in so many different ways and so many different aspects. And over those 90 years, we've changed and transformed with different names, different focus areas. But United Way of Missoula County focuses on health, education, and financial stability for our community. And those sound like really big things, right? Like health, like that just is a, it's so many, it encompasses so many things, financial stability, education. And so um, today, specifically why we're wearing these shirts is we're talking about Project Tomorrow Montana, which is our suicide pre pre prevention and outreach um, initiative. But, you know, United Way Missoula County, we, you know, we have the 5210 program, which helps get kids in schools, you know, outside, active and healthy before the school day. We have Imagination Library, which I don't know if y'all have ever heard of Dolly Parton. Woo! Just a little name. I but love she's started, Imagination Library. Best. So she started Imagination Library back in the 90s. And just in Missoula County alone, we've had almost 4,000 kids graduate from this program. And what it does is any kid, any kid from under the age of five gets one free book a month, right? So you can sign up a kid at, if you go to our website um, and they just get one free book a month and it's no cost to the family. Um, it costs us about $30 a year to run for one child. So it does take a little bit of legwork. It does take a little bit of work, but it's so worth it. And can you imagine by the time a kid is five years old, they have 60 free books. That's their own little library. Um, and the first book they get is a little engine that could, which is I love adorable. that book. It's adorable. Oh, I think adorable. I can. I think I can. So good. Yes. And then the last book they get is Ready Set Kindergarten. And so this really just sets up a kid kids for just really getting into kindergarten or first grade and a really, really great path. Um, and so we've had that program for a while now. And that's been that's been really great. Um, but yeah, and we also have um our, we support the Reaching Home, Missoula's 10-year plan to end homelessness. Um, as we all know, homelessness is an issue in our, a really big issue in our community. And we all, you know, no one wants to be homeless. No one wants homelessness in our community. And so this is a cooperative, collective program um, through the city and the county and through other nonprofits in our area that, you know, we come together and we say, how can we fix this? And, you know, that is a 10 year plan. And next year is the 10th year, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, but, you know, so we get to look at what all has been done in our community and what still needs to be done. So, yeah, I mean, United Way and we also, you know, we're really great emergency response. Last year we had our COVID-19 emergency assistance fund. We gave out about $330,000 um, to local people who were found themselves out of work, either, you know, gig workers, service workers, things like that. We also gave grants to local nonprofits that had suddenly lost their funding. Um, you know, when you need United Way, we'll be there. And I think that we just are a really great community response organization. Yes, yes. that's for sure. No question about that. All right, should we check out a little video, do you think, from the United Way? You guys ready? Yeah. Let's roll that video. Hello and welcome. Oh, welcome back, folks. Um, that was great. My favorite line from that is, hope is not a one-man band. <laughs> yeah. Definitely the best part. Um, I can't hear you guys. Are you all there? Yeah, and it seems we're not saying anything. Though. That was because we weren't saying anything. But I have to say that we, I think we missed an opportunity right there to show a one man band. Yes. And speaking of not being a one man band, we turns out we are never a one person band. And we brought some of our friends right? today to prove it. Yeah, we are never. We do this work collectively. I. This is like so. Uh, much part of this day for Missoula Gives is like none, none of our issues, none of our assets or resources in our community are fulfilled by one organization or one person or one place. It really takes a collective effort and I am really excited to um, have you all here. But hold on one second. I hear some buzzing. Is this, oh, is oh, look, it's, it's, it's clear question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Holly, <laughs> yes. Holly also wants a Project Tomorrow shirt. You know, we might have to get some extended sizing, but I will make it work. I will okay. make it work. Maybe we could double <laughs> we could, up. We could, we could yeah. just yes. like cut out a little area for and the stinger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That'll work. Well, Rosie and Rosie, do you guys want to introduce your guest? Excellent. Yes. So as I mentioned before, I'm the Rosie, uh, the other Rosie at United Way. I'm Rosie Ayers, and I'm the coordinator of Project Tomorrow Montana. And with us today, I have two of my good friends, David and Charlie, who are representing their organizations and the ones we've been collaborating with. Um, so I'm going to ask them to introduce themselves, and then I'll gush a little bit more about them if they don't gush about themselves enough. <laughs> so David, why don't we start with you, and then we'll move to Charlie. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thanks everybody. And thank you, Rosie and Rosie. Um, so my name is David Herrera and I'm with the uh, Western Montana LGBT Community Center. I'm also with the Montana Two-Spirit Society and thirdly with the Montana Gay Health Task Force. So I wear quite a few different hats uh, here in the community. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to be here. I'm actually uh, streaming in from Texas so where I'm here visiting family for um, that I haven't seen in over a year. Um, so I'm really grateful to not only be here with you guys, but to be here with my family. Yeah, you vaccinations! Woohoo! <laughs> that means we get to all be a little safer and be able to see our families again. Oh, and someone I actually got to see in person fairly recently, my dear new friend, Charlie. Charlie, will you introduce yourself and tell us more about you? Hi, gang. My name is Charlie McCorn. Uh, I'm also on the board for the Western Montana LGBTQ Center. I'm probably best known as the mercurial icon and the voice of your generation. It's <laughs> true. What else do I need to say? What else do I need to say beyond that? Enough said. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, I can start us off with a, a few things. Um, Project Tomorrow Montana uh, recently decided that we really wanted to collaborate with our friends around the LGBTQIA plus gender diverse community for Mental Health Awareness May. Uh, it's Mental Health Awareness Month, surprise! And um, we are here to increase all of our health because health includes mental health. So in doing so, we've been doing a few fun things. Uh, number one, we've been upping our QPR, which is Question, Persuade, Refer. It's one of our main suicide prevention trainings. Um, we give it to a lot of organizations, individual groups. It's every second Tuesday of the month that we make sure that that comes out and everybody can participate across Zoom. Uh, so that another one will be happening May 11th. Um, and in uh, another thing that we've been putting together is called Projected Hope. Uh, it's a projection downtown on the side of a Higgins building, um, the first Montana bank building, and that starts next Monday and runs for two weeks through May 24th. And we're so excited to represent that uh, our community and make sure that the allies and everybody in our community continues to support suicide prevention in all formats. Uh, unfortunately, as we know, 40% of our LGBTQIA plus gender diverse community has considered suicide in the past 12 months. That comes from a new study that just came out through the Trevor Project, which is one of our greatest assets in this nation for suicide prevention. And what we do know about Montana as well is our LGBTQIA plus youth are four times more likely to attempt suicide. And so therefore, we have to do everything in our power to continue to help them identify and see that their tomorrow matters and to give ourselves the opportunity to grow in health and sanity in our community. Um, so with that, uh, I'd, I'd love to invite um, uh, the Rosie next to me to just say a little bit about why Project Tomorrow is a part of United Way. Why why do we even talk about suicide prevention through the United Way? Yeah, so, you know, maybe for some people it doesn't quite fit, you know, why United Way would be involved in suicide prevention, why, why this would be one of our, our main programs. So in 2016, um, Project Tomorrow Montana came under 
uh, the United Way kind of umbrella as this really great collaborative project. It started in 2014 in the Missoula City County Health Department. And then it came here in 2016. And then in 2020, we made the fabulous decision to hire Rosie Ayers as our first project tomorrow, Montana coordinator. Um, so in 2016, we took this program under, but this doesn't mean that we're the only person working, we're the only organization working on it. This is still an incredibly collaborative project, working with other nonprofit organizations, working with our local health centers, the Western Montana Mental Health Center uh, partnership, you know, all different organizations that all touch uh, mental health in some way. And the reason why United Way is involved in uh, suicide prevention and outreach and education is just because you can't talk about health without talking about mental health. You know, your physical health affects your mental health and vice versa, right? So we can't we can't promote health and well-being and physical well-being in our community without talking about the impact of mental health, right? Especially in a state like Montana. Unfortunately, we've you know been pretty high up in the the suicide rankings for states for you know as long as they've been coming out. Um, especially Missoula County. And so this was an urgent health crisis, a health emergency in our community. So United Way could not stand by and not be impacted and not make an impact. Um, and because there are so many different uh, people invested in me mental health and because we already had relationships with a lot of these partners, we said, you know what, this is something that we need to prioritize and that we care about. You know, one in six people have been directly affected by suicide. That's too high of a number. That's not okay. And so United Way of Missoula County is dedicated to, um, you know, fund things like QPR trainings, to work on things like Projected Hope, to bring community members together and to, and to fund initiatives that say that we, that mental health is important and that, you know, we're here to support it. Charlie and David, you guys are some of our greatest leaders in town. And I would love to hear about, oh, look at your faces. You know it's true, quit being so humble. <laughs> um, but being a leader in our community is uh, sometimes a, a very public thing. And to be able to share a little bit about how you see our community being able to support our LGBTQIA plus gender community uh, diverse community, as well as what do you do personally to model good mental health or self-care behaviors? I'd love to hear a little bit more from you guys about how both to support the community and your own your own personal experience of making sure that you are taking care of your own mental health. Looks like David wants to start. I can tell. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. So, uh, yeah, I mean, mental health is something that is so important, uh, not only in my own life, but um, certainly that of our community. Um, and as a person who has um, uh, had a partner that struggled with uh, bipolar depression and stuff, so I know exactly, you know, that mental health doesn't not only affect the person in, you know, uh, struggling, but also those around them, uh, whether it be a family member or partners, you know. So, um, and it's a it's a roller coaster ride. So, yeah, it's something that uh, it affects a lot more of us than we think, uh, particularly when you start looking at the uh, extended, you know, uh, broader picture. And knowing uh, the challenges here in Missoula, where you know there's a shortage of psychiatrists, of you know. For a long time, there was just a, a challenge just to access mental health services. Period. So, and then when you um, talk about LGBTQ plus youth, um, when you talk about Native, Indigenous, Two Spirit youth, the challenges become even greater. Um, so that really has uh, kind of, you know, for somebody that's also been doing this work for many years, uh, whether it be not only with regards to the LGBTQ community, but also with regards to HIV, um, uh, people living with AIDS um, as well. So again, dealing with mental health issues, uh, it's I've seen firsthand kind of the, the challenges, but more importantly, the successes and, you know, that there is help out there, that there are things that we can do. And Missoula is, um, you know, it's just a wealth of 
just amazing people, um, not only with the community center, with United Way, with Open Aid Alliance, with all of these other um, nonprofits that <laughs> Missoula is known for. Um, so I think the important thing is, you know, that that there are resources. Um, you can reach out to somebody uh, and and not feel. I know it, it's a struggle, um, and sometimes it's just you know it's just a matter of just making it you know from one day to the next. Um, but yeah, that's what uh, I'm just so inspired by the people that I get a chance to work with um, every day, and, and that's what keeps me going. So, uh, and I hope that that's something that we can show to other people uh, that that there is a better tomorrow, and it and our tomorrow tomorrow does indeed matter. Thanks, David. Charlie, a part of my um, mental health has been laughing. I mean, finding humor in the darkest places has been a huge part of that. And also having a supportive community. We know that that's one of the biggest protective factors for anybody who has entered any, uh, any sexual minority or gender diversity is having a supportive community immediately changes the landscape and creates protective factors against suicidal ideations. And you have been a part of that supportive um, part of our community for quite a while. You support so many people and make us laugh which is extremely important for our mental and physical health. So I can't wait to hear a little more about that. Uh, absolutely. I think community is one of the most important things that we really have to take care of, of each other. Uh, from my own personal experience, uh, this month is actually going to be the 10-year anniversary of my last suicide attempt. Um, and it was a really rough time in my life. I was unable to really accept things about, you know, very fundamental things about myself and uh, there is no more humbling feeling than waking up handcuffed to a hospital bed. I will tell you that. And a lot of people, when I tell them this story, they tell me that, oh, I, I'm so brave to, to, to be able to, to walk away from that and to turn my life around. I, I say that the story is not about me and my decisions. It was my community that reached out to me and took care of me. And I'd like to make sure that I can give back to that community. I'm, I'm deeply involved in the local writing uh, and comedy scene here in Missoula. Um, as a stand-up comedian, I've had the, the, the privilege of touring this whole country as, as this incredibly queer Montana comedian, showing a larger diversity of what people imagine lives here. And the only reason I'm able to do these incredible things is that I had those people who reached out to me and showed me that there was a better way. And they, they took care of me at my most vulnerable point. And I am just incredibly thankful for the opportunity to pay that forward a little bit. And in talking about that perfect protective factor of acceptance, could you guys talk a little bit about some of the really perhaps obvious or um, maybe even the not obvious ways that we can create more acceptance in our communities, in our families, in our workplaces? What does acceptance feel like or look like? I would say that the most important thing about acceptance is recognizing that, you know, though we are a state of just a million people, you know, we are not homogenous. As much people think, there, there's a lot of different diversity, special gender diversity um, and LGBTQ people living here and understanding the special needs and the special beauty that that sort of brings to it. You know, right now we're, we're seeing uh, legislative movements to, you know, openly and actively drive us from this state, which for people already struggling with mental health after this impossible year that we've been living through this year of isolation, you know, there's a lot that we have to consider and make sure that we are aware of everyone and to make sure that we are protecting the most vulnerable among us. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll just, you know, again, touch on that as far as um, the fact that, you know, for a lot of, you know, marginalized individuals, including LGBTQ, trans, you know, folks are definitely feeling under attack right now, given what's going on, not only in Montana legislature, but across the country. Um, and so I think that uh, if anything, you know, our history has shown is that, you know, we have a resiliency within us and a strength within us that is unmatched. And I, and I hope that people will look to, you know, our history and, and our ancestors and those that came before us and the struggles that they dealt with and what they had to do with. And, and you know, just, just tap into that strength that we, uh, and that we are all a part of, uh, that we can use to help us, you know, just make it through another day and realize that we will fight. We're not going to give up and we will make sure that tomorrow, you know, gets better and better. So, 
yeah, we are standing on shoulders of giants. Whatever you know, we put up with now, whatever we do now, makes it that much easier for whatever LGBTQI people come after us, which is important because we are we are a community. We have history, and we foundationally must take care of each other. What are some ways that our LGBTQIA plus community can connect at this time? And what are some of the events maybe even that happened in the last year that we're connecting? And what do you guys see coming up? Well, one of the big things that's coming up is that uh, that I'm excited about is that we're actually going to have Big Sky Pride happen <laughs> this right. year. Right. I think um, it's, I want to say it's July, what, 11th? through the 16th? Did I make that up or is that 16th close? through the 21st, I believe. There's a comedy oh, kickoff show on the 16th, I believe. I think that's, <laughs> I'm going to look that up, make sure we all have the right date here. I'll be a, I'll be a week early. <laughs> <laughs> Way yeah, my flag but, by myself. So, I mean, I think it's, uh, I'm just so glad and excited that that's actually going to happen, that we're going to be able to come together, hopefully in a safe way. Um, and because I think right now more than ever, you know, we need to be together and we need to, you know, join together because that's where our strength comes from, you know, and uh, finding our common ground, finding, you know, the things that 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 we um, all have in common as opposed to focusing so much on what divides us. And I think too often, you know, we let, you know, those that oppress us to do that for us and then we in turn do that to ourselves. So I think, you know, by, by coming together and seeing each other one face to face, um, and knowing that there is strength in numbers and that we do, um, you know, know that ultimately love wins and conquers all, so. Sure does. Uh, what kind of things does the community center have to offer? Can you talk to us a little bit about some of your programs or uh, what's been going on down there? I know recently I talked to Andy Nelson and he gave me a tour of, uh, of the amazing um, room full of clothing that is there. And my <laughs> my friends and I are getting together for a clothing exchange and just decided that we're going to give our leftover clothing that is on point and <laughs> fancy to you guys. Yay, because right now well, thank you so much. we have, yeah, we have, the center is full of clothes right now and but it's a lot of you know masculine <laughs> men's clothing so uh, uh we are still taking donations but we desperately you know would love to have you know uh more clothing for you know for women and uh, gender neutral and stuff so um but yeah that's one thing that that we've been able to still do uh, a lot of the groups that meet at the center unfortunately are still meeting virtually um, but they've been doing that throughout the pandemic, so it's been great that they, you know, they're still being able to provide support, um, even if it's, it's through a computer screen. So, um, yeah, in addition to that, just a lot of the referrals, we get phone calls, and so we make a lot of referrals to, to folks that are calling about, hey, um, I'm interested in, in housing, I'm, I'm on the verge of maybe being homeless, you know, where, where do I go, who do I turn to, um, I'm looking for a trans, you know, provider uh, for, for um, and who who do I go to there? So I think there's a lot of referrals that we're able to make um, and and just connect people. I think it's just making those connections for folks that that are that that don't know where to turn to, uh, whether it be a family member um, or a person that's LGBTQ. So and the center really you know partners with not only the Montana Gay Health uh, Task Force but the Two Spirit uh, to really just provide you know a broad array of services for folks. We also have Where coming up in October. Oh, oh, we also have coming Go up in October. It. Sort of our our um, marquee event, uh, the Black and White Ball, is returning, which we're very excited to get back out to really create that level of community and really, you know, get back together after being so so far apart for so long. Because again, community is what it's all about. Absolutely. Where can we go to find out more about these events and services? Uh, well, I mean, you can go to our website, uh, although the website, I think, is probably uh, needs to be updated. So I don't know that we have the, the most current as far as the black and white ball goes, because we just sort of made that. <laughs> um, and we've been discussing this, but I think we just signed the contract because we didn't know with COVID and where we were going to be and by then. So but but we have decided that, yes, we are going to go put, move forward with the black and white ball. So. Um, but yeah, but just give us a call. You know, our number is 543-2224. Uh, 
um, you know, leave a message. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Andy Nelson uh, as our staff that is able to, you know, just make those connections and do that blood work. And uh, he's just been amazing. And is, and also you can reach us out on social media. So we're on, on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Um, those are another great ways that you can reach out to the center and find out more about what's going on and what, what, what we're doing. So. Fabulous. And what's the website address or your Facebook or Instagram handle? Is that what they call it? It is. That's yes. what the people, that's, that's what, what the young call it. Call yeah. it. Handle. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Do you well, know what those are? Is, <laughs> I know the website is uh, gaymontana.org. Um, it's a good website. Easy to remember. It's right there. <laughs> I was going to say, yes. your, like, your email address is like, it's like david at gaymontana.org, Andy. And I love that. Like, I'm really, I wish United Way, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I feel so sure that was, like, half as fun as Gay Montana, that work. <laughs> for sure. Grant. Yeah, that, um, I don't know, Charlie, do you know that uh, I'm not that much on Instagram, so <laughs> I'm, I'm old. I'm checking. I'm, I'm going. going up real Hold quick. On. <laughs> I think it's it is LGBT here. Montana. Ooh. There you go. That makes it easy. Yeah, Gay Montana was taken. That's a different thing. That's a different person. And we support them <laughs> in whatever they're doing. I mean, it's not us, but, you know, same family. Oh, we like it. <laughs> For no sure. And, you know, one of the actual programs that's coming up that we've been working with uh, the center on is something called Projected Hope. And there, I feel like there's still time to submit photos, right? Do you want to talk a little more about that? Yes. Projected Hope uh, is our art installation of a projection that is shown on the side of a building. It's the first Montana Bank building downtown on Higgins. Um, and that starts next Monday the 10th and runs through May 24th. So the rest of uh, most of the rest of Mental Health Awareness Month. And what we're asking is for you to submit a picture of yourself it says my tomorrow matters on it black and white uh, or a picture of your friends and you or your colleagues and your um, family and yourself with the message of your tomorrow matters or our tomorrow matters on it and you can always email me find that on facebook on our event um, project tomorrow montana.org is our website easy to find and projected hope is on there and um, my friends have already started uh, um, submitting their photos. David's is quite dashing, I have to say. And Charlie, I agree. well, Charlie, they are still waiting to submit yours because they have mine. I submitted what? it. Uh, you did has. already? I'll vouch for him. Yes, I've seen it. It's great. It's awesome. It's great. <laughs> oh, I look I can't really wait. hot in it. I look so <laughs> flipping hot in it. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait. Love Andy it. did say that he had a whole bunch of other ones to upload today. So I can't wait to see it because it hasn't come across my desk and I have been waiting so patiently. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you guys have any shout outs? Any friends that you know haven't submitted yet that you want to just call out right now on live stream? Feel free yeah. to just. I'm calling out all of my friends and community members in Missoula's homegrown comedy. Uh, you know, misery loves comedy uh, and taking photos, comedians, you know, they're hams, they want to do it. I think it's a great opportunity for a lot of great people, a lot of funny people, and a lot of people who work really hard to make this community magical to, you know, make sure they remember that we are part of this community and we are there for everyone. Absolutely. I yeah, think one of the other cool things about, oh, go ahead, David, sorry. I was going to say, I, I'm calling out to all of our, you know, uh, amazing, you know, uh, drag performers and, you know, folks, you know, within the, the community, um, also within the, you know, trans non-binary community as well, because uh, particularly given, you know, what's happening with the tax uh, on the trans community, I think it's just important, you know, for for community members to know that, that they're not alone, that there is, you know, hope and that we will, you know, get, get past this, so. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And we have already had many um, of our community submit their photos, probably almost 50 at least. Uh, so please join us because it's a big crowd and we want you to be a part of it. We do uh, even have, I, I, I really want to make sure that Juicy Bouvier, if you're out there, <laughs> we 
want to hop in, please <laughs> send us your beautiful photo. And um, another thing that we have done recently is made sure that a lot of our friends have been getting updated QPR training to make sure that they know about recognizing the signs and symptoms and then what to do if you have a friend who is in an emotional crisis. Uh, have you, have either one of you taken any of that training or learned anything recently that surprised you or helped remind you about what was important about help seeking or what to look out for in our friends and family? Uh, yeah, I actually went through the QPR training just, what was that, last week or two weeks ago, Rosie, I don't know when, but uh, yeah, it was a, it was amazing. Um, I'd heard it, I, I mean, had heard about it, you know, for years. I've gone through different suicide uh, prevention uh, prevention presentations over the years, so uh, you know, I was very well familiar with a lot of the the data and and uh, you know, a lot of it, you know, not so great for Montana uh, and Missoula. But again, uh, the fact that we have these resources, we have these trainings, and the more and more people that know uh, that can, you know. Just that there is things that, that you can do, that there are myths associated with suicide that we need to overcome, uh, and that that it isn't the, a foregone conclusion, you know, that, that that people cannot help themselves because they can, and I think never underestimate, you know, how strong uh, the strength that we have within ourselves. So that's one of the messages that I tell myself, and also share with others every day. So we have also Absolutely. seen. We also see that there are, you know, there are warning signs that we can look for in our community. We can see people changing their attitude. Um, they might uh, have their their hygiene might start to deteriorate a little bit. They might be lacking sleep or sleeping all of the time. Reckless behavior, anger. But I think the big thing I think to look for is that people will will talk about it. This is something that people will not talk about it specifically, but talking about death and, and morbid things or you know giving away their, their possessions to to people around them. These are all warning signs that we, we have to look out for. Um, especially, like I said, now is we haven't had a chance to really be face to face to a lot of people. You know, we see people over Zoom. We don't really get a, a large idea of, of what's going on in their lives, but you know, th there are signs there, and, and to be aware of them and to help take care of each other. Yeah, and you can always check out Project Tomorrow Montana's website to find out more about those signs and symptoms. But it is the biggest thing that you can look for is a drastic change in attitude or behavior in some way. So if someone is down and depressed all the time and you see that change to being overjoyed, that might actually be a symptom and vice versa. So it really is about knowing a little bit more about your friends and checking in on them on a regular basis. And if you see some change in hygiene or giving away things, uh, you, you say, see a change in even patterns of habits. Uh, they stopped going to work maybe uh, or um, they're not reaching out or being a part of that Zoom meeting that you usually have or showing up at, at work um, on time anymore. Uh, those are things to ask. And like David talked about, one of the biggest myths in suicide um, is that you shouldn't talk about it, is that talking about it somehow brings it into someone's mind. And in fact, we have found that pretty much the opposite is true, is that naming it and asking someone um, are you feeling suicidal? Have you had thoughts of suicide? Uh, is a very important question. And it immediately helps us to see seen, feel seen and heard and helps people to answer that question. If you don't ask the question, it's impossible for people to answer it. So just being able to reach out and say, are you suicidal? Have you thought about killing yourself is a very important thing. And checking in on your friends, asking them if there are things that you can do. And as we know with suicide prevention, um, as we've all mentioned, it's not just about mental health, it's about our whole health. So suicide prevention in our community can also look like secure housing. It can look like food security. It can look like access to health care. And that's both regular, uh, what we think of as regular health care and mental health care, right? And as we mentioned before, the center has a safe list. If you are concerned in your community about how you're going to be received by a doctor or finding someone that supports your identity and your path, um, we have resources to find out who in our community is up on that um, on, on those particular issues as at the cutting edge of research and training when it comes to all the new practices 
and is a safe ally to be with. And in doing so, um, when you do reach out to a friend, make sure that you offer hope and resources. If you don't have the answer, just stay with them until you can connect to one of us on this screen or one of our organizations to get you the resources that we need, that they need, that everybody in our community needs. Is there anything I missed? I don't think Peeps? so. Yeah, I think just going to projecttomorrowmontana.org, you'll find the long list of resources, community organizations, um, and more importantly, and not more importantly too, you'll also find this list, um, well, you can't read it, but it says, you know, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, the National Crisis Text Line, so not just community organizations that re you can reach out to, but also if you or someone you know is in crisis, these are the numbers to call these to, or to text. Um, to get resources for an immediate help. Our suicide prevention lifeline is 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255. And our text line is 741741. Uh, the Trevor Project is another brilliant and beautiful organization. You can always find them. Um, uh, let's see if I have the number in front of me. It's one of those ones I have not memorized yet. Oh, it's, I got it. Hold on. Hold on. It's, hold on. It's, it's close. close. She's I'm getting gone. it. She's getting it. <laughs> <laughs> and they also have an amazing website that talks about help seeking and identity affirmation. Oh, you got yeah. it? Yeah. So the Trevor, Pro and you can text or call, or you can also online chat with the Trevor Project too. And why did you go away? That's so <laughs> annoying. Um, it's one 488 7386 that's 1-866-488-7386. And one of the coolest things that just happened in Missoula, it is only a few weeks old, is we created here in our Missoula County a, a national, a certified National Suicide Lifeline Center. So now when you're calling that 800 number, you will most likely get someone right here in Missoula, who knows our local resources, who can connect you with the center, and all of our friends who are allies here. And, um, and, and that is phenomenal. We've been waiting for that to happen for the last year. There's only three centers in Montana, and now Missoula has one of them. So we are serving all of Western Montana. So that National Lifeline has come here in anticipation of in another year, we're all going to be able to dial 988 and immediately any emotional or mental health crisis, we'll be able to get help directly from uh, our community. It, it will be like, just like dialing 911. And we're lucky enough too that we have mobile crisis units now um, as well, so people can, can come out and, uh, and there's another response team that does not involve always having to deal with just our policemen. Um, they work very hard, uh, but we also want people who are qualified to really help with that specific area of mental health crisis to be able to respond to those crises. Yeah, and we're not we're not just talking about you know suicide and mental health because this is literally what you do. This is literally what we do. Um, but we're also talking about because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh, like all of May, that's true. And we get to celebrate mental health, and we get to celebrate our community partners, our community resources that we have for mental health. So, what do you do to celebrate your mental health, and how do you? How do you treat yourself? How should I, I treat yourself? I have something very personal, so I can't wait to hear what all the rest of you <laughs> on this panel are gonna say, because I'm about to reveal exactly what I decided to do for Mental Health Awareness Month. And it is that pandemic has been different for me. I took a desk job, this job, where I get to be at the computer and on Zoom much more often. Um, I have been a theater practitioner my whole life and I'm a theater director and theater teacher when I am not preventing suicide, which actually probably is also preventing suicide, theater and arts in general. So my job has been a lot less um, active for the last year. And what I found is that the meanest person that I know is me. I'm mean to me. I, I listen to things that I say in a way that I would never listen to anybody else treat me. And so I started catcalling myself every time I walk past a mirror. <laughs> every time I go past a mirror, instead of thinking those terrible things that I think about myself, instead I stop and I give myself out loud, which I tell you that my children and my partner think it's hilarious. I give myself all sorts of compliments nonstop out loud. I say things like, wow, look at those legs. 
you have got some strong and brilliant legs, right? And um, I tell myself how healthy I am, how beautiful I am, how sexy I am. So I have been out loud cat calling myself for the whole family to hear, which I got to tell you that I'm pretty sure my beagle Ennis, he totally appreciates it and agrees because he always comes running with like his little tail wagging. He's like, yes, you are. You're amazing. <laughs> so I would love to hear what you do, Rosie, for mental health awareness. Month. You know, I'm then top Charlie that. and David. <laughs> Number one, I can't top that. Number two, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Um, so actually, um, on May 1st, I started training for a 10K. Uh, yeah, um, because I realized that my mental health is so much better when I take care of my physical health and when I go to the ex and exercise. And, you know, I, I'm not catcalling myself. I will think about it, but I'm not there yet. But I have um, just, you know, making sure that my, I'm strong when I feel like I'm physically strong. I feel like I'm mentally strong. And that's just something that I've always made sure, you know, throughout the pandemic to go hiking or walking or making sure that I'm, I'm physically active. And that's just something that I was like, you know what, I need to actually like pay attention to this. So I'm going to train for a 10K. I don't know when a 10K is coming up, but I'm going to be doing it. Will I survive? Let's hope. Let's hope. Let's hope. If you give me consent, I'll cat call you. Yeah, I am. And we probably only have like 35 <laughs> seconds left now. So David and Charlie, you got to tell us really fast what you're doing for, for your mental health. And then we'll make the B and Marcy tell us also. Yeah, I'll do so simple. Really I stay, uh, oh, I stay so hydrated and true crime documentaries. There you go. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. Hydration uh, and crime. Rosie, crime. Yeah. Rosie I'm, I'm with you. Uh, physical activity. I'm so fortunate that I've been able to still, you know, do working out. And then I'm also a tennis player. So tennis, you know, literally on some uh, days has saved my life. So, um, yeah, that's where I can escape and forget everything. So. Masula, well, we give it back to you. Marcy and the bee, you tell us what you do for Mental Health Awareness Month. And and Thank please keep so giving much. to United uh, Way and the center and give I, us all your uh, photos. Uh, and I'm, it's I'm sort of, I think I'm with David here. here. I, um, I'm, I'm all about, I, uh, I have a bike that goes nowhere in my house, and, but I've also been doing a lot of hiking with girlfriends, which feels really good and has given us the opportunity to, um, you know, meet and chat in sort of a safe environment.